peace in Jesus, the Savior. Uh, I want to encourage you to take out the, the insert in the bulletin today that has um, says sermon notes on it and has the prayers on the back. I just want to say a couple words about this before we get into it. You probably already figured this out, but I want to say it anyhow. You may notice this is kind of the format we've been uh, using the last several weeks and will be um, pretty much every Sunday. Um, a section that says sermon notes, that's just for you to obviously make any notes you want to that uh, are important to you as you, as you hear the message today. Uh, but I want to draw your attention to the bottom box, takeaway. What am I taking away? And it's two simple questions. What's God saying to me today? And what am I going to do about it? So, so if there's something that in, in the, in the uh, flow of worship, it could be the sermon, it could be a hymn, it could be whatever, something that really strikes you and you go, I needed to hear that today. I think God's saying something to me today. Go ahead and write it down. And then if God is saying something to you, if something is striking you, it's because God wants there to be a response. So what is that response? What's God want me to do about it? And, and write that down as well. And we've changed this to being an insert, and on the back you have all of our prayer list. The idea is, take this with you. Take this with you. Your, your, your notes from what we focused on in worship today, what you may have heard God saying to you, and, and what you intend to do about it, and also the list of all the people we're praying for. Take this home with you. Put it in your Bible. Put it on your refrigerator. Put it somewhere as a reminder in the coming week uh, of, of what happened here in worship, but also of who you're praying for. So just want to encourage that um, in the weeks ahead. <clears throat> you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The baptism of our Lord again is our focus today, and we make a big deal about it, don't we? Set aside a day in the church year for it. Uh, communion both services, every year we do this, commemorate the baptisms from the past year, remember our own baptism. Yeah, we make a big deal about it here. But it's not just St. John's making a big deal about it. The Gospels make a big deal about it. You know, in the, the Gospels, the four Gospels, with, in addition to the, the death and resurrection of Jesus, there are only two incidents from Jesus' life that are in all four Gospels. One is the feeding of the 5,000, which points back to Moses, and Jesus is the new Moses. And the other is the baptism. The baptism is in all four Gospels as the beginning point of His ministry. So, yeah, it's a pretty big thing. This is where it all begins, the ministry of Jesus from here into the wilderness, and then into His ministry, then to the cross, then to the resurrection, and then to the sending out of His disciples to baptize and to teach. So you see Jesus' ministry kind of bookended by baptism. And that, that brings out the other important point of it and why we, we commemorate it this way here and that there's a connection between the baptism of Jesus we just read about and celebrate and our own baptism. Now, what is that? What is it about this baptism of Jesus that we really want to take away f with and, and want to take to heart in our lives? Well, let's take a look at the baptism of Jesus and, and what's going on there and how that connects to us. The story itself is familiar. John the baptizer had been baptizing people down by the Jordan River, calling people to prepare for the coming of the kingdom, and to do so by coming and repenting of their sins and being baptized. And the Gospels tell us that, that everybody was coming out, the whole countryside. This is really, and it was all spreading by word of mouth because the official religious establishment was not endorsing the ministry of John the Baptist. So this was all being passed by word of mouth from one person to another, and everybody was coming out. To be, to be baptized, to repent for the forgiveness of sins, and prepare for the coming of the king and the kingdom. Okay, then Jesus shows up. Now, Jesus shows up. Does he need to prepare for the coming of the kingdom? 
well, yeah, we're going to come back to that, but, but does he need what everybody else is coming there for, to repent and be forgiven? Well, no, he doesn't. That's, that's not why he's, he's there. He doesn't need to repent. He doesn't need forgiveness. And John the Baptist knows this. In Matthew's gospel, Matthew tells us that when Jesus showed up, John objected, said, wait a minute, wait a minute, you're here and I should be baptized by you and you want me to, well, this is all wrong, essentially, I'm paraphrasing. And, and Jesus says, no, no, do this for the fulfilling of all righteousness. In other words, this is important, this must happen, let's do this. Well, why is it important? Why did Jesus come down there? What did He take away from it, if not repentance and forgiveness? Well, yes, it's an example for us, isn't it? It's an example to put content around what Jesus will later enjoin upon His whole church, go and baptize. But what is that content? What's the point? What's going on here? Why is Jesus there? I think it has to do with the words and what happens. What happens with Jesus' baptism there that didn't happen with anybody else's? And we just heard about it in the text. The heavens open, the Spirit descends, and the Father speaks. I want to focus on those words. He says, you are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. What's happening here? The Father is pointing to the Son, saying, you are my Son. You're the one I love. You're the one I delight in. You're the one I'm proud of. This is what Jesus is here for, for this, and for the Spirit to come upon Him. Focusing on those words, this is about identity. It's about who He is and the identity which He has that will then impel Him and send Him out into His ministry, the beloved Son of the Father with whom the Father is well pleased, delights in, and is proud of. That, that is His identity. But look at those words. You're my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. Why is the Father well pleased with him? Really, in the Gospels, at this point, Jesus hasn't done anything. He was born, received gifts, was carted off to Egypt, brought back. Oh, yeah, he asked a few questions at the temple when he was 12 years old. But he hasn't done anything regarding his mission. Everything flows out of this baptism. Nothing has gone before. So what's the Father well pleased with? It's not anything that He has done. It is not based on His accomplishments or His successes or, or whatever. In other words, it's grace. It's grace. It has completely to do with the first words that He said, you're my son, whom I love. That's why he's delighted and well-pleased and proud of him. Now, to think about it, you who are parents, why do you love your children? Is it because of their accomplishments? Is it because of what they've done? You know, that's not true, or that should not be true. And if ever they have the feeling or the impression that that's why you love them, boy, we got trouble. We love them because we love them because of the relationship and the identity. You are my son. You are my daughter. And so here it is with the Father. Now here at the beginning of Jesus' ministry, before he takes one step of that journey that will take him ultimately to the cross and the empty tomb. The Father is just pouring out identity on him. 
You are my son. I love you. I'm delighted in you. I'm proud of you. I'm well pleased with you. Don't go one step without being showered, immersed in this grace-filled love of the Father. That's a good starting point, isn't it? And Jesus goes into the ministry, onto his mission, not conceiving of the love of the Father and the approval of the Father as something he must attain, accomplish, and earn, but rather it's the foundation from which he begins. Rock solid. You're my son whom I love. And these words will come up again in Jesus' ministry. Transfiguration, right? Very similar words. Right before he sets his face to Jerusalem. Again, the father kind of a booster shot. You're going to that cross on this foundation. I love you. You're my son. I'm delighted in you. I'm pleased with you. You have nothing to earn before me. I give it all to you. We are one. That's what's happening. That's what Jesus is taking out of that water, taking out of the, from the baptism. That and the Holy Spirit, that's a topic for another sermon. But I hear the identity. Okay. Now it's connected to us. Our baptism, the baptism we remembered here this morning, the words we spoke, those that happened this past year we're commemorating. Well, there's a connection. One of the reasons Jesus' ministry is bookended by baptism is that, like I said, His baptism gives content to our baptism. So when Jesus says, go and be baptized, we know what He's talking about. There's a connection. Yes, in our baptism, as elsewhere in Scripture points out, there's forgiveness. In our baptism, though, also, and this is what's being emphasized here in the connection with Jesus, there's identity. And the same gift that the Father is speaking upon His Son, Jesus, there in the Jordan, that same declaration, that same gift for each one of us. You are my son. You are my daughter. I love you. I'm delighted in you. I'm pleased with you. And this too, as it is in the Jordan, is grace. Pure, unbounded grace. Built on what Jesus Accomplished, going to the cross, rising again. That's why Jesus doesn't send his disciples out to baptize in his name until afterwards. And it's grace. That the Father's love, you are my son, you are my daughter, whom I love, with you I'm well pleased. It isn't about what we've done, it's not about our accomplishments, it's about the love of the Father. There is nothing we can do to make our Father love us more. So think about that. And the love that He has for you, for me, is the same love that He has for Jesus. You see, the gift of the Father, the gift of Jesus through Jesus is everything. He gives us everything. Romans 6, the epistle reading we just heard read. In baptism, Paul says we're connected with the death and the resurrection of Christ. We're connected with Him. We have an identity in His death and resurrection, and that's why we don't keep on sinning. It flows out of that. The doing follows the being, and who we are is connected to Christ, and that means everything that Christ has is ours. Everything He gives to us. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Yours is the kingdom of heaven. He gives us everything, including His Father's love. And so, the Father loves you, speaks these words to you personally as much as to Jesus. Do you believe that? 
that the Almighty Father loves you as much as He loves His Son. It is true. And our mind might be going to things that we have done, how we don't deserve it, how we're unfaithful, how we don't live up to it. That's right. See the word on the bottom there? It is by grace. His love for you and me is infinite, just as it is for Jesus. And, and just as there's nothing we can do to make Him stop loving us, we can't really do anything to make Him love us more. He loves us completely, totally. And just as for Jesus, this is the foundation point, the starting point of His ministry. The Father doesn't want Him going one step toward the cross without showering Him in this love. The same is true for you and me. In baptism, and as we remember this reality, every day I go forth each day, every step each day, showered in the Father's love. It's who I am. Identity. That's what He's giving here. Our identity. That's why He gives us His name the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He gives us His name, our identity, as children of the Father. And we have a number of things that, can, that make up our identity. I think of who am I? I might think of my name and my family and nationality, ethnic background, education, all those different think, components of my identity, of who I am, and they're important. A lot of them are very important, especially family. But above all, foundational, this is my identity. I am a beloved child of the Father. Nothing can change that. And so I go to whatever challenges await me in the coming week as the beloved child of my Father. I'm facing whatever decisions I have to face as a beloved child of the Father. I'm dealing with whatever, whatever temptations may be in my life as a beloved child of my Father. It's all about identity, right? As it was for Jesus. Now, what happens, what happened, remember the flow of the Gospels, right after the baptism of Jesus, the next thing that happens? He's off into the wilderness for the temptation. Forty days to abide with the Father and prepare for His ministry, and Satan attacks him there, right? Satan tempts him there, tries to get him off track there. And what is Satan going after? He's tempting him, right? Three different temptations. But the point wasn't really to get him to sin. If you are the Son of God, turn these stones to bread. If you are the Son of God, jump off the temple. If you are the Son of God, bow down and worship. He's going after his identity. He's trying to undermine what had just happened in the River Jordan because he knows the power of living out of your identity. The doing follows the being. I am beloved child of God. If we can hold on to that every moment, how our living and walking would be blessed. Remember, um, some of you remember, Others not. A song from back in the 70s, a Paul Simon song, Loves Me Like a Rock. Remember that song? Kind of a goofy song about uh, the devil will call my name. So who do you think you're fooling? It's about going through life and the devil keeps coming after him. And ultimately his response to the devil is, hey, my mother loves me. She loves me. She gets on her knees and hugs me and loves me like a rock. That's what we're talking about. And no matter what's going on in our lives, my Father in heaven loves me. And nothing can shake that. And nothing can take that away. That's who I am. My identity. My Father says to me, said in my baptism, my Father says to me every day, you are my son. You are my daughter, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. May God bless each one of us, secure each one of us, root each one of us in that identity 
of this incredible gift of grace that we have in Him. And as we go into each new day, we do so on this foundation. My Heavenly Father loves me. I belong to Him, and all His blessings are mine. Amen. Would you please rise for prayer?